Welcome back everybody, my name is Tucker and today is another episode of NBA Jeopardy. This is a series in which I give you guys some clues about various NBA players and you try and guess who I'm talking about. The twist this week is I'm going to throw in some stuff related to the ratings in NBA 2K19. But even if you don't know a ton about that, there are enough other clues to help you out. If you have any other versions of this you'd like to see, be sure to comment them down below. And with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. First up is a former top 5 pick that was selected in the past 3 years out of the Pac-12 that plays for a team in the Eastern Conference. He's a former McDonald's All-American but hasn't gotten his career off to a great start so far despite his high draft position. He's only rated as a 76 overall at the moment in the initial NBA 2K19 roster behind guys like De'Aaron Fox with a 78, Dennis Smith Jr. with a 78, and Spencer Dinwiddie with a 79. And the player is... Markel Fultz. Drafted with the first overall pick in 2017 after an outstanding freshman season at Washington, the former McDonald's All-American out of DeMatha High School in Maryland infamously had his fair share of struggles as a rookie with the 76ers. He only appeared in 17 total games between the regular season and playoffs, so him being rated below those other guys I mentioned isn't that surprising considering that they actually, well, played last season. But I'm sure Philly fans expected much more of him relative to the other guys in his draft class when he was selected a year ago. There have been some promising reports coming out of his offseason training, however, so this could be a rating that we see change pretty dramatically as the season progresses. Next up is a former top 20 pick from the 2010 draft that has already been traded twice in his career, including midseason last year. After averaging less than 10 points per game in each of his first three seasons, he's exceeded 17 points per game in each of the past five seasons, including back-to-back -back 20 points per game seasons in that same time span. Despite a few rough outings in the Eastern Conference playoffs last season, he's rated as an 81 overall in 2K19, ahead of fellow point guards Isaiah Thomas with an 80 overall, Ricky Rubio at 79, and Chris Dunn at 78. And the player is... Eric Bledsoe. This one might have been a bit tough at first because the 2010 draft was so long ago, but once I started talking about Bledsoe's struggles at times in the playoffs last year, a few of you might have been able to get this one. He came off the bench in his first three seasons with the Clippers, but moved into a starting role upon being traded to Phoenix in 2013, where he averaged nearly 19 points per game across his four and a half seasons with the Suns, including back-to-back 20-plus -back point-per-game campaigns from 2015 to 2017. Depending on your opinion of the other point guards I mentioned, you might have been surprised to see him ranked above them in the initial 2K ratings, but with how many good point guards there are in the league, I'm sure there were some tough decisions made in the development process of the game. Moving on now to another point guard, I know I started out with three of them, but this is the last one, I promise. This player went undrafted in 2010, but has averaged 10 plus points per game in every season of their career so far except for his rookie year. He certainly well traveled, however, having played for six different teams already and having been traded to yet another new team this offseason. He's rated as a solid 78 overall in 2K19, just behind fellow point guards Lonzo Ball, Darren Collison, and Reggie Jackson. And the player is... Jeremy Lin. Another player from that 2010 draft, there were a few more obvious clues that I could have given for this one, but I felt like it would have made it too obvious to be honest. I could have mentioned his time as a breakout star with the Knicks and the whole Lin Sanity era, but I don't want to make it too easy on you guys. Lin only posted a 2.6 points per game average as a rookie in limited action with the Warriors, but averaged double digits in that category with a handful of teams along the way throughout his career, including the Knicks, Rockets, Lakers, Hornets, and for 37 games across two seasons, the Nets. He was moved to the Hawks this offseason to try and mentor young Trey Young, but even with his up and down career and at times struggles with injuries, there's no doubt that going from undrafted out of Harvard to a 78 rating in 2K is pretty impressive, even if he is behind those other guys I mentioned. Next up is a big man and former McDonald's All-American that has incredibly impressive career averages 
to this point in his career, posting over 21 points and 11 rebounds per game. A former top five pick, he's the highest rated center in 2K19 with a 91 overall, but was a third team All-NBA selection for last season. And the player is... Carl Anthony Towns. Probably the easiest answer in this video, I was actually pretty surprised to see Cat as the highest rated center in 2K19. The next closest are DeMarcus Cousins at 90 overall, Joel Embiid at 90, and Nikola Jokic at 89. I figured Embiid would be ahead of Towns, but it's such a small margin that in the end it's not going to be that big of a deal. Embiid was actually probably a guess of many of you guys as I read off the clues, but he was actually named second team All-NBA last year with Anthony Davis making the first team who 2K19 acknowledged as a forward rather than a center just as he was listed on the All-NBA team. Moving along, we have a wing with an 82 overall rating in 2K19 ahead of fellow young players Otto Porter with an 81, TJ Warren with an 80, and Kyle Kuzma with an 80 as well. A former top five pick and McDonald's All-American in high school from the state of North Carolina, he was the ACC Rookie of the Year in college and was named to the All-Rookie second team in his first year in the NBA. He showed huge improvement last season, increasing his points per game average by nearly seven and significant increases in his shooting percentages both from the floor as well as from three-point range. However, he has never been named to an All-Star team nor an All-NBA team. And the player is... Brandon Ingram. There weren't really a ton of specifics to give here because I was only working with two NBA seasons worth of data and I didn't want to give it away by mentioning that he was selected in the 2016 draft. Ingram played high school basketball in Kinston, North Carolina before becoming the ACC Rookie of the Year at Duke and making the all-rookie second team with the Lakers. After being selected second overall despite some pretty modest averages considering his draft position, he showed significant improvement and an improved comfort level as a featured option last year, something that will need to continue this year in order for the Lakers to reach their own lofty goals as well as to appease his new all-world teammate LeBron James. Second to last now, we have a shooting guard, a former top 15 pick out of the Pac-12 and an NBA dunk contest champion. He's averaged over 10 points and three assists per game in every season of his career so far, and is an 80 overall rating in 2K19 ahead of fellow shooting guards Dwayne Wade with a 79, Buddy Heald with a 79, and Tim Hardaway Jr. with a 78. And the player is... Zach Levine. To me, this one was pretty easy as well, even without knowing what year the player was drafted. Levine chose to declare for the draft after just one season at UCLA and quickly became a fan favorite with his combination of outside shooting ability and incredible athleticism, which allowed him to win the NBA Slam Dunk Contest in 2015 and 2016. He's increased his points per game average significantly in each of the past two seasons, but has unfortunately only played in 71 games in that time span. The Bulls made a fairly big gamble on him remaining healthy and continuing to grow as a player by matching a sizable offer sheet to Levine from the Sacramento Kings this summer. But if he can fulfill his promise and prove to be worth all of that money, his 2K rating should begin to climb as well. Last up is a forward also out of the Pac-12 conference, a former top 10 pick that was traded on draft night to the team he now plays for. He made the all-rookie team in his first season and I even made a video about him during that year to try and get more people to acknowledge how well he was playing. He has an 82 overall rating at the moment in 2K19, ahead of Javari Parker with an 81, Dario Saric with a 79, and Derek Favors also with a 79. And the player is... Lowry Markkinen. Going with back-to-back -back Bulls to end the episode wasn't something that I meant to do, but here we are anyway. Markkinen was the seventh pick in the draft last year after an outstanding freshman season at Arizona and was traded to the Bulls as part of the Jimmy Butler trade on draft night. After putting up strong stats as a rookie, he was named to the all-rookie first team as I mentioned, and as my channel was starting to take off around that time, I did in fact make a video about him. As I said, he is ahead of his new teammate Jabari Parker in terms of 2K rating with a rather high 82. 
but if the Young Bulls continue to grow together and have a strong season, I wouldn't be surprised to see a number of them have a boost in their 2K ratings, including marketing. And that is going to be the end of today's NBA Jeopardy episode, and I thank you all very much for watching. Next up is either going to be a regular Monday list video, or potentially, I might push it off to Tuesday and make a Trade Machine Tuesday video on the Jimmy Butler situation, depending on how all that works out and where it stands by that point. Either way, once again, my name is Tucker. If you missed any of my previous Monday, Wednesday, Friday videos, then be sure to check out the boxes on screen. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.